Do you get stuck when you need to apply color on your projects? Sometimes we worry so much about composition that we forget that what gives our project that wow factor is the colors we use and how we apply them. Hi, it's Karen here. In this video, I will help you learn how to apply one color combination that has always given me excellent results. You will learn how to apply the colors and learn why they should be combined in that specific order. Why just one, you may ask? By mastering one combination at a time, you will feel more whole and happy when creating because my main goal in my channel is helping you learn, create, and be inspired. Because creating makes us happy. So let's get started. As you can see, I've already glued down most of the elements in my project. I will explain what elements I added on my project, how I added them, and why. I wanted to create a project using lots of gears and cogs. I used cardstock circles to build my composition because I wanted it to look like the inside mechanics of a clock. You can see that I used lots of resin molds, but I also included an aluminum lid from a food container, some metal washers, and some cardboard to hold my project together. I really wanted the circles to look as if they're floating, but I needed something to keep them sturdy. The embellishments are castings from silicone molds. I have an excellent video that I will link at the end of this video on how to use silicone molds in with five different products. So I don't have to make this video longer explaining it here. Stay tuned until the end for that link. Once it was all dry, I covered everything with white gesso to prepare the background for the paint. Do you want to know why I did this? For two reasons. I wanted to prime the background for the embellishments so they don't resist the paint as their surface is smooth. And second, I wanted to have an even surface through all my embellishments as some were metal and some were resin. Once the white gesso is dry, which I dried with my heat tool, you can start applying color. I will be using Finabera Fluid Acrylics today, but you can use watercolor, sprays, or any water-soluble product. If you don't have liquid acrylics, you can dilute regular acrylics with water to get the same effect. The shades of color don't need to be an exact match, but the theory of how to apply them will help you attain beautiful results. Since I'm a brand ambassador for the Finabar brand, I created this video with her products. The three colors I'm applying today are turquoise blue, true yellow, and tiger orange, which is a very rusty looking orange. This combination gives your projects that rusty patina effect you see in real life oxidation. First, I use my spray bottle to wet the background. That way, when I add the acrylic paints, they dilute even more. I dipped my paintbrush in the turquoise and added it on top of the embellishments. Then, I sprayed more water to dilute the blue even further. The key to this technique is to add colors in a specific order. The color order is blue, turquoise in this case, yellow, orange. Why, you may ask? Truthfully, the only rule for this technique is that the orange is last, as it's the most potent color, so I leave it till the end. You can add blue or yellow first depending on what color you want to predominate. I wanted blue to be predominant, so I added it first. Next, I added the yellow, and this mixed with the blue gave a beautiful greenish teal tone that looks like a dark patina. I tried not to add too much yellow as I didn't want my project to be fully green. It's best to add a little bit at a time if you are not sure how much. You can always add more, but it's harder to take away the paint. I also diluted the yellow with more water. Then it was time to add the orange. And this is my favorite part as I love the rusty look. For this color, I mainly added it around the edges of the embellishments. This gave the project the oxidized illusion. If you look at rusted metal, usually it starts rusting at the edges of an object first. That's the look I was going for. Color theory is such a broad subject that people can study it for years. But what happens to those of us who just want to create now and don't want to wait years? Even though it's just one color combination, you will feel happy you've learned how to master it and then apply it to your own projects. By focusing on one combination, it narrows down the guessing game and will help you feel more satisfied with the results. Once you applied all three colors onto the background, you can continue to add more color while the paint is wet. 
At this point, you can definitely combine them again. So you can start adding blue again over the orange and then over the yellow. As long as you've already put the lighter colors first and then added the darker ones afterwards, you can now continue to combine them without any problem of it getting messy. This is the point that you really start seeing that patina rust. And depending on how you like your colors, you can add more or less. The choice is up to you. I love it when the colors are very prominent and dark, but you don't have to do it this way. To get rid of the excess sprayed water, I lifted the project and let the water drip onto my mat. Then I wipe the excess with a baby wipe. You don't need to do this step, but it will just take longer to dry. And I don't know about you, but I'm very impatient. I heat set the colors really well so I could add some more finishing touches to the project. I wanted to keep it simple, so I just used the Finabar Aged Brass Wax to highlight the top of the embellishments. I love adding gold as a highlight because it makes it all look so pretty. It's one of my favorite techniques. If you don't have the waxes, then you can dry brush gold acrylic paint over the top of the embellishments. That's what I used to do before these amazing waxes came out on the market. Once I finished adding the highlights with the wax, I realized that I was missing some shadows through the embellishments, especially in the lady's face. So I took some of the same colors again and added them to the face. The nice thing about it is that the wax resists the acrylic paint. So when I add it, all it does is just goes underneath the wax in the deeper areas of the embellishment to create that really dark shadow underneath. Then you just take a wipe and you wipe it off the wax and, and it takes it off easily. I also love enhancing projects with some splatters. I diluted the orange color with water and splattered it onto the circles. I always find that splatters give that amazing finishing touch to every project. And I used the yellow paint to color a clear light bulb embellishment and glued it onto the page as a title. Here are some videos for you that can help you get inspired.